Hi there, welcome to another edition of Talk Stocks. I'm your host, Keir Reynolds, and today we're lucky enough to have Shane Williams, President and CEO of West Red Lake Gold Mines. Trades on the, on the TSX Venture Exchange with the ticker WRLG. Hey Shane, how you doing today? Good, I'm being good. Great to be on, Keir. Great to be on. Hey, excellent. Uh, you've uh, you've been somebody that I've been wanting to have on for quite a quite a while. I know you're a busy busy guy. Lots going on since uh, since stepping in and really taking charge here. Uh, so I guess our theme for today is really uh, kind of what's in your branding. It's really a new vision for the Madsen Mine in Red Lake. Yeah. Um, before we sort of dive into the opportunity and how how what you guys are going to sort of um, you know what the sort of business yeah. game plan is. Maybe you could get into a bit of a background for those of us who don't know you. Uh, you have a bit of a reputation for bringing projects into development. Maybe you could kind of uh, give us a little bit about your background, who you are, what you've done. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's 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 amazing when when you think about it in today's market. You know, like people, talent is a big issue. You know, as you know in the mining industry, and so. You know, there's not a lot of people out there that have that ability to bring projects into development and, and get things going. You know, the market is few and far between and those sort of things. So, yeah, my background, I've really been 25 years now in the industry and mainly always on the side of the owner side, you know, the operator side. And, and, and that gives you a unique perspective of the A to B on building projects. You know, all the way I've been involved in four nearly four developments including Madsen now as part of that so really taking projects from very early stage early exploration through the various studies all the way into engineering construction into operation and into and, and into full operation and ramp up and i've also been on the other side which has been a, been an operator i've been a, um, a vp of operations for a company so lots of experience from a to b on on the project side Prior to West Red Lake, I was with a company called Skeena Resources, who people probably know. We had a very good run, early stage, all the way up. I was the COO for Skeena. And prior to that, I was with a company called El Dorado Gold for a number of years and was built their mines in Turkey and in Greece. And the, something that's very relevant, the Lamac project in Val d'Or, which I was involved in, and we got that very similar to Madsen. We got that from an early stage project to full operation in 18 months. So. A lot of lot of background of bringing projects into operation. Uh, not too many people have had a chance to work in Greece. Uh, that's a pretty in interesting uh, environment for sure. A little different than Red Lake. <laughs> it's a pretty cool place to be at a mining company, a mining setting for sure. And um, yeah. well, Lorado has a number of operations there. They're building the big Scuries mine. I was involved in actually building the Scuries mine and doing the studies and everything. So we lived in Athens and I worked in the Turkish operation. So yeah, it's a good place to be in mining. You can be a lot worse places than, than Greece for sure. <laughs> so in Tur you got a pretty impressive resume there. Um, you know, there's uh, not all that many people that, uh, you know, can put a mine into production in 18 months like you've done. Uh, would you say that that's some of the formative experience uh, that you really bring to the table here? Uh, I know with uh, Madsen, um, you know, the previous operator had a bit of bit of issues with, you know, uh, oh. being, being able to operate it sort of, you know, um, you know, with any sort of margin and whatnot. And maybe you can dive into some of those details. Uh, but would that be one of the reasons why you're here is uh, based upon uh, being able to get mines into production and on time and under budget yeah well, yeah i would say that like you know our one of our main backers is frank Juster, who your viewers will well know has a reputation for building large companies large canadian mining companies and so you know he sees the setup for gold the macro alignment for gold and wants to build another version of a, a gold corp and so he needed people who can build operate and run mines and big big operations so that's how I got involved um, and was part of the early due diligence of the mine, went down, had a look at it, you know, understood the challenges that they had um, and, and look, made a bit of a plan on how we could go about doing them and, and came back and saw the value and said, we've got to go move this. So that, yeah, that experience is very relevant to a plan to put it right. Really. <clears throat> so you mentioned Justra, what's it like, uh, Having him as a, sort of a major shareholder of the company, um, you know, he's, uh, I guess, arguably making mining great again. He's been obviously a great advocate for the industry and really helping to, um, you know, 
make sure that it becomes topical uh, with a younger audience as well, uh, mm-hmm. as well as, uh, you know, working on the political side of things. Um, you know, what's that like, uh, you know, uh, working sort of, uh, I guess, having him as a major shareholder? Yeah, no, it's been great, actually. You know, some major shareholders are, you know, are, are just shareholders as part of the thing. Frank has been building companies for many, many years. And so, you know, he's, he's created work when there's a, I'm, I'm based in the main office, the Fiore Group, which is based here in Vancouver. And there's a, a, sl- a, a suite of companies underneath that structure. And the idea is that we're all working together, supporting. Frank is a very good supporter. Obviously, he has lots of experience over the last number of years, and he's 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 no problem giving that back, supporting, guiding, helping. Which is, you know, if you have if you need to have somebody in your corner and building money companies, there's no better than Frank for sure. There's four or five legends out there, and Frank is definitely one of them to help grow the company. So that's it's been pretty good. Excellent. So. Uh... Why don't we dive into a little bit more specific uh, with with the company? Maybe you could provide an overview on West Red Lake, uh, what assets you've got, what projects you have, maybe just an overview uh, for us. Yeah, I'll just step back a little bit on the context. When we we decided we wanted to build a a mining company, a gold mining company, we kind of looked around around Canada. And we, we saw, as your viewers would probably know, I was based in the Golden Triangle with Skeena prior, and there's a lot of activity ongoing there, a lot of activity, a lot of juniors, a lot of developers, a lot of opportunity. So again, Red Lake has a very famous history in Canada, gold mining, over 40 million ounces of gold have been uh, developed there, a lot of it high grade, but it's been kind of ignored a little bit. There's, you know, there's big majors there, Evolu- Gold Corp was obviously there, Evolution bought that mine, you had Great Bear. A lot of your viewers remember the great run and the story of Great Bear. Had a great run a yeah. number of years ago. Kinross now came in and bought that. So there's no really up and coming developer in this region. And we saw that as an opportunity to become the main developer mover in that area. So that's kind of how we picked Red Lake. We picked up a property called the Rowan property, which was our earth and exploration property on the other side of the lake, hence the name West Red Lake. You know, so that has about 800,000 ounces at nine grams. So a very high grade ore body. Good, good. That was the first foray into that, into the region. In the meantime, then Pure Gold, who were the previous managers, were going through their challenges. So we kind of saw the ability to consolidate within the region. So we went in, we put a team in, we did our due diligence and Sprott Resource Lending were the main lender to Pure Gold. So they were the ones who were running the, they ran a process a little bit, and we managed to get in, put an offer in, and 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 end up owning the project. And all that was very quick. We, you know, the company is only did the original deal on Rowan in in uh, of April last year. In June of last year, we had Madsen, so we've been moving very quickly, really. And we've only really started before Christmas this year of getting underground and drilling, etc. So, and so you've got now two projects. Uh... One a past a near term past producer in in Pure Gold's Madsen, and then you have your Rowan uh, property. Both of them have forty three one on one resources, mm-hmm. and both of them would be fairly significant uh, in terms of like uh, typically high, higher grade higher, than what you'd yeah. find elsewhere in the world. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, high grade is a is a key part of the strategy. Um, you know, and and the thing about the Red Lake area is, you know. The, the key to those is high grade systems. And the deeper you go, the higher grade that, that these ore bodies tend to be. So, you know, if you need to be, if you need to be in an area where the potential upside is good from a geological perspective, there are certain areas of the world. Red Lake is certainly one of them. The activity in, in Quebec is another one. So these are areas you need to go to where you can get really good upside from drilling. So that's kind of where we targeted that area. Obviously, everyone knows the Gold Corp story and the high grade zone in, in yeah. Gold Corp. So, you know, these are the opportunities that provide. So that's kind of where we went there. The idea is, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so sure how many people these days uh, know the Gold Corp story. It's getting, it's getting on in, uh, well, in years well, from when that was yeah, sort of put together. I, I, uh, it's, it's a, but, but some of us OGs certainly know how they put it together and and uh, put Red Lake on the map for sure. Uh, just in terms of what you mentioned, you mentioned the grade tends to 
uh, increase as you go uh, at depth. Just for those of the viewers that don't really know a lot yep. about uh, re the Red Lake area, these mines have like a tremendous depth to them, do they not? Yeah, look, Red Red Lake has been in production as a re really since the early 1800s. You know, th this was a very early area and they've been still mining. That will give you the quality of the ounces in their area. They're still mining. There's been over nearly 50 million ounces of gold pulled out of this region. There was over 30 mines at one stage. They've all been consolidated over time. And um, yeah, so these systems, they've been mining the, the Gold Corp mine, which has now been bought by Evolution. That's mining down at 3,000 meters today. So that'll give you a scale of how the depth of these systems go. And at, down at that depth, it's seven gram material. So it, they continue very deep. They have very deep systems and very high grade as they go down. Right. You know, your typical open pit mine would be just over a gram, yeah. gram and a half sort of deal globally these days. So you're getting magnitudes uh, quite a bit higher. Yeah, and remember as well. <laughs> and yet, Back when I first started my young career, uh, everybody got excited when you had bonanza type grade, anything over 10 grams, but that typically would just be a narrow interval, not necessarily yeah. the average grade of a mine. Uh, but you guys with Rowan have sort of an average grade on your yeah. on yeah. your uh, 43101 resources that's sort of approaching that. Um, so anyways, that's fantastic. Well, and just, just, maybe, just jump in on a point there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. You know, when, 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 go back to the Gold Corp, they had an average grade of around that six or seven grams they were operating. They put in some expl deep expl exploration holes and the average ore body they found of that high grade zone was 70 grams. So there are these pods, there are, and it transformed that mine from a 50,000 ounce a year producer to 600,000 nearly. So there are these pods deep down in the system that in Red Lake, uh, have have come to with exploration and as you go down deeper. So that's the real opportunity from us as we as we advance this. Because there wasn't a lot of exploration done by Pure Gold because they had the issues. They had planned to do it, but they never got around to it for sure. Well, that's a perfect segue. Maybe you could kind of talk about a bit about um, you know the the challenges that were faced by the previous operator and maybe what key lessons uh, you guys have sort of learned from that and how you're you know, how you're going to shape your approach to it moving forward. I, I obviously did a bit of research in preparation for our chat and you've, you've highlighted a few sort of key findings and some uh, uh, strategies in, in your pitch deck, but may, I'd love to hear it directly from you. Uh, if you could, if you could maybe comment on uh, the past challenges and then how you're sort of relooking at it, what's your new approach? Yeah, to go back a little bit, one of the, the group that was involved in that group, the oxygen group, which was a, a Vancouver-based kind of stable of, of companies. Their focus right. was early stage exploration. You know, the historically, they were early exploration. They were develop, not, not really developers, not really operators. So that's kind of part of the issue we saw. We believed one of their, what they wanted to do is get the mine and hopefully sell it and pass it on to somebody as an operator. So, you know, they, don't, they didn't have that operational experience of, taking a mine from construction all the way through to operation. It's normally a different set of skill sets. You need people with technical background who've done it before. So that's, your viewers will be aware of that. There's been quite a few projects who have kind of failed at the last moment. Um, so that's part of it. They also took on a lot of debt. You know, they took on $150 million of debt. We'd had a lot of covenants on it. So they needed to get into production very quickly. So with that, these systems in Red Lake, as, as you mentioned, are very deep, but they need a lot of drilling. Underground development and drilling is needed for these systems so you can understand the ore body. And, you know, they never really got a good handle on the ore body. They never did enough drilling. They never did a lot of uh, development underground. So they didn't really understand the ore body. So, you know, they did great on the surface facilities. Remember, that your viewers should should be aware that there's been three hundred and fifty million dollars spent on this project. You know, it's been it's been a past producer. It was in commercial production. All permits are there. Unfortunately, underground is where they needed to spend and focus, and that isn't the work. They haven't done that. So our focus over the next twelve to fifteen months is really develop underground and do a lot of drilling underground. So that's primarily our focus to de-risk the technical issues that were we saw. There's no issues with metallurgy, no issues with tailings, et cetera. It's more ore body risk and, and getting the level of drilling to, to operate these mines. 
Uh, so uh, as part of that sort of uh, Madsen and uh, Gold Project acquisition that you were able to do fairly quick after uh, getting Rowan, uh, it, it uh, significantly increased your mineral resources. So would you mind sort of just discussing a little bit in terms of an overview of now what your mineral resources stand between the two projects? Yeah, yeah. On, on Rowan, we have like 800,000 ounces at the moment in, in inferred at 9.2 gram material, high grade and in 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 Madsen, we have just over 2.1 million ounces, around an average grade between inferred and indicated of around six grams, 6.5 grams material. And are and are these uh, projects sort of located in a close proximity to each other? Is there ever a scenario where uh, there could be like a joint operation? Oh, you you got it exactly <laughs> perfect. So the idea, the long term vision is to create this hub and spoke model. Some of your viewers will be familiar because we have the Madsen Mill. We're the only kind of independent with a mill now in 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 Red Lake, and so you know Madsen will be the bread and butter, the main mill. But Rowan, with the material from Rowan, can be trucked across to Madsen Mill. It's about an eighty kilometer distance by road, or in, in Red Lake, they have an ice road in the winter, actually, across the lake. So all that material, we don't need to put in a mill infrastructure tailings. We can actually truck that high-grade material across to our Madsen mill and use that as a, a feeder to, to kind of sweeten the grade of, of, of Madsen. Um, and that's kind of the strategy going forward. There's also a lot around Red Lake of high-grade deposits, probably too small to justify a mine. But eventually they could be consolidated again within that central feed system. So that's kind of the bigger vision why we went with Rowan and then used that for Matson. You know, give us that hub and spoke model with high grade material. So that's the, the long term plan. And, and Madsen, it, it was a it's a permanent mine, if I'm not mistaken. It was it was in some state uh, some element of production uh, by Pure Gold at one point. Uh, what's it permitted for in terms of total tons per day? And maybe you could explain some of the assets that you were able to get. Uh, what sort of equipment uh, uh, do you have there? Well, a lot of it, your viewers can go on our website. We have a lot of videos and a lot of pictures. But but primarily, this mine was built and in operation. So it's a fully built mill. There's a mill, brand new mill there. It only operated for about 18 months. So... There's a brand new mill, the mill, $150 million of a brand new mill was put in place. We have underground equipment in place. They bought underground equipment. We have underground development. We have um, underground development. We have a shaft. There's a shaft on the site. So to get down deep into the system, there's like a lot of infrastructure, uh, water treatment plants. There's, you know, maintenance wow. shops. There's everything you would need on a mine, basically. A mine is ready to go from a mining perspective. And more importantly, for your viewers, permitting is a challenge in Canada. We have a permit, permit ready. Our, our mill is, is, is permitted for 800 tons a day, sort of a range. And however, it can be expanded to 1,500 tons a day. So that gives us a lot of scale of growth. Hey, excellent. Uh, well, if I if I'm not if I didn't read incorrectly, uh, back when Pure Gold had it, they had their peak market cap back in 2021 was just over a billion dollars with this project as its principal operation, and uh, and I guess for Madsen there was historically I guess greater than 350 million invested into the site, so you guys are able to pick that up for kind of a song, <laughs> uh, uh, which is a great opportunity for for investors and and you know obviously for yourselves to move such a world class project forward if you can kind of get the economics worked out. So uh, nice deal there. Yeah, look, I think that, that one of the reasons that it appeals to so many people is, you know, a lot of us on this, obviously the, the industry believe in the price of gold as we go forward. So you have upside there, but you also have the value investor who can get in early, you know, who believe in, as, as um, Warren Buffett says, pennies on the dollar, buying things penny on the dollar. And so we saw... Like there's been $350 million spent on this. The market cap, you're right, actually peaked at $1.2 billion. And there's also, as we picked up, $270 million of tax losses associated with the project. So with no more tax to pay for a long time. So all that value, we ended up picking it for $6.5 million in cash. Plus, Sprout, we converted all their debt to equity in the company. So, you know, it's definitely, I call it the deal of the decade. It'll be called deal of the decade in when down the road because it was a really good deal to get. And 
you know, it's 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 ready to go, really. What, what, once we do this de-risking, it's ready to production, you know. Great segue. What should investors look forward to in terms of uh, production restarting? When, like, when, when yep. would that be? And what steps do you have to achieve first before that would happen? Yeah, so we have a lot of catalysts coming up, really. Um, we're underground drilling in Madsen. We really only started in, in November of last year. Um, we've had some very impressive results. So your, your viewers can go onto our website from Madsen. We will be continuing to drill for the next few months, basically, all through most of this year. We have some exciting opportunities. I don't know if your, your viewers will remember, but there was a very high-grade zone in, in Red Lake in Madsen called the 8 zone. And this was, we believe it's equivalent to the high-grade zone in Red Lake. It has very high-grade ore body. It's down deep in the system, but it has that. We'll be drilling that later this year. We're also kicking off a pre-feasibility study this year. We'll be doing that towards the back end of this year. And the plan would be a restart mid to the end of 2025 is our target, really. So lots of catalysts building up to that pre-feasibility study the end of this year and then a potential restart the middle of 2025. As part of the pre fees it'll get into what annual sort of production and stuff uh, looks like, how many ounces yeah. you produce. Is there anything out there in the public domain uh, right now in terms of what you would hope uh, for sort of like what size and scale this might eventually become? Yeah, yeah. The, the previous management did, um, did a little bit of work on it. So it was around a 70 to 80,000 ounce a year producer as the base case, but that can ramp up very quickly, you know. So the plan would be to start around that sort of production level. Yeah. And then uh, if, if and when you're able to advance Rowan, as part of that, uh, that could also in increase annual production as well, provided there's uh, there's cap there's uh, I guess excess capacity yeah. at uh, at the mill. The mill has excess capacity. The idea would be, you know, during the operation of Madsen, you know, we have permitting to do. It's an early stage exploration project, but that material would feed in and extend the life and increase production. Obviously, it's nine gram material. It's higher grade, and we could ramp up fairly significantly based on Rowan. Uh, coming into that project sounds like you got a lot to work on yeah. lots of lots of meat on the bone there for you as somebody who's uh you know a mind starter so uh some some great uh you know some fun toys yeah. to play well, with and, I, and some great catalysts upcoming. well and for your viewers i mean look one of the reasons i liked it is i've been in project development for a long time and it can take up to 10 years now today to get a mine into production you know, by the time you've done the exploration, the studies, the permitting, the construction. And what, what I liked about this was really attracted me was we can be quickly the cash flow. You know, we can be quickly the cash flow for small amount of additional money. We can be small into cash flow and up and running. And, you know, if you believe and we believe in the gold price, if you're coming into production and your gold price is rising at the same time, it gives a lot of leverage to gold price and upside. So. You know, we believe we will get back to that pure gold sort of market cap. So from where we are today in that sort of a period, that's quite a good return and a quick growth story. So that's why they were all the elements why I liked it and came on board. Uh, uh, you know, any other deals of the century out there? Uh, are you looking at any other potential acquisitions? Uh, I know there's not much you could probably talk on, but is that part of the strategy is to also look for further acquisition or you've got enough? Uh, to really work on right now with Rowan and Madsen? Well, the, the strategy we have is this buy and build strategy that Frank has used successfully over the years. And I would say Madsen, obviously we have a lot to do with Madsen, but the plan is to build a mid-tier producer in Canada over time. So, you know, there are stuff out there. Your viewers would be aware there's a lot of consolidation going on in the industry. There's a lot of potential opportunities there. So we're looking at those. We're looking at growing as a company. And, so the, over the next number of years, the idea would be to build on Madsen and grow into a mid-tier producer. So lots of excitement to come down the road. So if you think about where our market cap today is and you look at some mid-tier producers in Canada, that's the sort of upside some of your viewers and, and investors who come in would, would, would be looking at. And how, how many ounces a year is considered mid-tier in this uh, current market? Uh, currently around three to 400,000 ounces a year sort of area. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and uh, so great segue again. Why don't we move into sort of the financial side of things, cap structure, 
Um, maybe you could talk a bit about your cap table. What does the cap table look like? How many shares are sort of outstanding? Yeah. Do you have any debt? Um, do you have any strategic shareholders other than Frank Juice that you can talk about? Yeah, we, you know, I look at, we've no debt on the books. We, we wiped out, we converted all the debt to equity. So there's no debt on the books. Oh. Um, obviously Frank is the largest individual sh shareholder. Frank has around 12% sort of of the company and look, Frank will be there for the long term. No matter what we do, Frank will always maintain that 12, 13% around. So he's a long-term shareholder. He believes strongly in the company. He's a part of that. And um, when we converted a uh, Sprott, they're a 24% holder of, of the shares in the company. Um, and we've also brought in um, a couple of other strategic shareholders. Van Eck is another big shareholder. We brought in Terra Capital Extract Resources, which are big institutions. So from, an inst from a strongly held shareholder base, we're over nearly 50% of shareholders are long-term shareholders who are here for the long term. So that gives a lot of confidence for your viewers as this is a long-term story. A lot of these guys are in for the long term. So, you know, that's, that's, that's important. Excellent. And, sorry, how many shares are outstanding so, as of today? About 280 million, 280 million shares outstanding today. Okay. And uh, that gives you a market cap today of, uh, of approximately? Just around 150, 160 sort of thing as the markets are moving around. Canadian. Canadian. Great. Okay. Uh, how much insider ownership does the company have? So uh, outside of like, outside of Frank and some of the other uh, strategics, uh, how about sort of, uh, you know, management and directors? So I have about 3% myself. We have the directors. We're about 4% at the moment overall, 4 to 4.5%. Excellent. Thank you. Um, what what else should we, uh, what else should we know sort of about the project or opportunity? I haven't asked you. Yeah, I would say um, for your viewers, look, team is everything today, as you know, in, in these projects. And, you know, we have a very, very strong board, board of directors. You know, we have the who's who of Canadian development. You know, we have a, some of your viewers, if they go on our website, they should be aware of. We have a Tony McCooch, who people might know, who built Kirkland Lake, which is really one of the success stories in Canadian mining over the last 10 years. Yeah. Tony built a, a company from a small production company all the way up to a huge producer, which ended up getting bought by um, Agnico Eagle. So, you know, Tony's background is building building companies. That's really one of the reasons we got him. Another guy is Duncan Middlemass, who has was Westo Mining, again, built Westo Mining, and Hugh Agro, who was with Kinross, an M&A corporate strategy. So, you know, these are heavy hitters. You know, these, this shows the intention of the company to grow and become a big producer you know it's a lot of groups talk about it but you, you need the team you need the management team and we have everything we have the backers and frank and the team i think we have a very strong board and we have a good management team and that's a winning combination to to build a large company in canada uh do you uh do you get a chance to go to site much yeah i was just there last week on site and I'm, I'm there again next week. I'm going to PDAC next week and I'm going to site on the way after. I go, I spend a lot, I believe in when you're building these companies, you need to spend a lot of time on site. And it's, you know, you, you, you need to have that corporate alignment with the sites and you need to make sure you're on boots on the ground and everything. So that's very important for me and the management team. I insist the management team are on site regularly. I've been there twice this month. I try and go twice a month really to site, which is, it takes its time. It's a bit of effort, but it's worth it, I think, with the teams. And you're based in Vancouver I'm, when yeah. you're not on site I'm, these days? I'm based in Vancouver, yeah. yeah, yeah based. And what I guess, uh, what's a typical day in the life look like uh, in your role? Maybe there may be no days typical, but maybe you could walk us through what it, what it sort of looks like. Yeah, a lot of my early stage at this stage is really, you know, doing shows like yourself, getting, you know, to give your viewers, you probably know a lot of the, there's a bad reputation from the old pure gold management and the mine failing. Unfortunately, a lot of people got burnt and investors because all the shares really got wiped out. So a lot of it is kind of con on these shows, meeting investors, talking to people, trying to convince them of the new approach. You know, there's a bit of skepticism there, as you probably, as we talked about earlier, this is, this mm -hmm. has failed. It's um, so a lot of it is at the moment is about trying to get financing in place and also talking to viewers and talking to investors and conv and sh 
laying out our story like I did, once we lay out what we need to do in the plan, we're beginning to get them around. Even some existing Pure Gold shareholders are coming back in because they believe in the approach we have. So a lot of it is that. Also then on the stuff that's going on on the side, helping to ramp up, getting the teams going. That's that, So between that, there's quite a lot to do. And the travel. I do a lot of shows and the conferences as well. So yeah, sure, a lot going on. A lot going on. Yeah, I guess there's another gauntlet sort of session coming up here uh, beginning of March with uh, Metals Investor Forum and uh, Red Cloud and PDAC yeah. and everything in between. So uh, you'll be you'll be busy. Uh, maybe you could speak to what sort of like catalysts. I, I know you already touched earlier saying there's a lot of catalysts, but maybe as we just sort of wrap up, if you wouldn't mind re-highlighting yeah. some of the catalysts that you have over the next six months. Uh, how many of the projects are you currently drilling? Um, you know, how, how many uh, assays do you think you'll sort of have out? When should we expect them? Yeah, yeah. We'll probably have, look, we're, we're, we're in the back half of, we drilled raw and really all last year. So that was the focus. This year, the focus is on Madsen, really, our Madsen mine. Um, and we're doing a kind of a two-stage project. One of it is the definition drilling that I did the risking phase I talked about. So yep. we, that's ongoing at the moment. We have one drill underground. We'll have we'll add a second one in a couple of months. So there will be a steady stream of drill results coming out from that, I suspect, as we go forward. We're, we're planning to drill around 50,000 meters of underground drilling, quite a lot of drilling. But wow. I think the upside will be that there's quite a bit of exploration that the pure gold team knew about, but because of the issues, never got to. So I think there's some exciting upcoming catalyst that people will go, wow, this is this is something special. And, and you know, this is the, the much different than the pure gold team envisaged. So that, I think that'll come in, you know, we're looking, we're drilling a couple of new areas. Our drill results that came out in the last couple of weeks were in new areas. We're continuing to drill those. So, and then we'll hit doing a pre-feasibility study, which I expect to be the back half of this year. And we're actually going to drill the eight zone in the back half of this year as well. And that, that would be pretty spectacular. The sort of grades that are down there are similar to the high grade zone in Red Lake. And I think people will see that and understand that. So. Yeah, lots of upcoming drill results really will be the focus for the next three months. So to put you on the spot, why should investors consider investing in you right now, today? Well, I think they're getting a unique opportunity. Look, I, you're like, it's like getting in a gold corp at 40 cents. You know, this is where I think this will be another sort of great growth story or the Kirklands of this world. A lot of people miss that sort of, or great bear. You know, people got in, as you as you are as you will know, a lot of the retail tend to come in a lot later when it gets very floaty and you know at the later stages. I think this is a unique opportunity to get in very early as the company grows over the next number of years. And you know, with Frank and the group, things grow very fast. So now is the time, in my opinion, to get in, get yourself positioned for that growth story over the next number of years. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much. Uh, maybe just before we wrap up, maybe we can just comment a little bit on the mining and metals sort of environment. Uh, it's been a tough sector. It's kind of been, you know, kind of a story of the have and the have nots. You guys are a have, you know, you've got some strategic money, strategic uh, investors. So you guys have been able to kind of raise money at will. Whereas, like you said, you, you were able to raise, you know, 50 million, about 50 million more than a lot of other companies. Um, do you sort of, uh, you know, see any of that sort of like turning around, um, you know, are, are within the sector or do you think it's going to remain uh, pretty, pretty difficult and and uh, in a pretty small sort of club of those that have strategic and those that don't? Well, at the high level, at the at the big companies, like gold is 2000. You know, I, I think gold prices held up very, very well, given the Fed and the raising of interest rates. Yeah. And you know, if you're a producer today, you're getting good margins, you know, at $2,000 gold AISC. So unfortunately, it hasn't trickled down <clears throat> to the, the, the lower levels. And usually what happens, it takes some time. We look, it takes some time for that to trickle down. But I suspect the trigger will be later this year as, you know, the Fed start to pivot, potentially, you know, start to lower interest rates. I think that will be the catalyst for you know, the, the money to flow into the junior. So I would say it'll be a back half of this year sort of story before money comes into the juniors and the, and the lower level. That's kind of a high level of where I think it would be. Uh, one of the things we kind of hear a lot about is really the, uh, you know, 
I guess, uh, cost of production, you yeah. know, the operating sort of expenses of some of these, um, you know, I guess some groups have been better than others. Uh, in terms of being a modern sort of gold producer, where are the places you really want to try to manage costs in, in, in this day and age? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think a lot of the issues as a hang up from the COVID and the, and the supply chains issues, you know, um, a lot of it is the majority of costs on a mine are, are particularly labor costs, which is which is pretty much a majority of it. But you have lots of uh, um, consumables, drill bits, uh, fuel, diesel. And I think having processes to really focus in on those and, and negotiate with suppliers. We're beginning to see that it is coming back off. It was growing over the inflationary period. It is beginning to level off and potentially come down. So that gives a lot of hope as we go forward because the gold price is still staying high. So it increases the margin as you go forward. Well, hey, Shane, I really appreciate you spending some time with us. I hope you'll come back here in the next sort of quarter after you've made, made a bit of progress and give us a bit of an update. Um, again, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, I'd love to come back and, you know, in a couple of months, give it, give an ongoing update. You know, part of what I like to do is, you know, there's so many new viewers getting in or, or people trying to get into mining and it's good for them to be part of the journey and, and, you know, build that trust and build that stroke focus and, you know, be part of the journey as we go forward rather than just hear the nice results and get under the cover, see what's going on. So we're also doing a series of articles on our website. You can sign up to our as an investor and we do updates on a regular basis. So that's a good way as part of the journey to follow us along. So, yeah. Excellent. We'll make sure to direct some folks your way to, to sign up for that for sure. Hey, Shane, I really appreciate it. You have yourself a wonderful day. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah.